Hey, everybody. Welcome to One Email, Two Takes. Uh, it's a show with Sales Hacker that we take one cold email and we rewrite it not one way, but two ways. So you get Will's expertise on a rewrite and you get Christina's expertise on a rewrite. Um, I am one of the co-hosts, so I'll just give a quick introduction real fast and then I'll pass the mic over to Will. Uh, I am Christina Finseth. I am an advisor to Lavender. Um, we work a lot on cold email outreach and looking at the data and geeking out on it. Um, I'm pretty sure Will will shake his head and say, yes, we do that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also, in my full-time gig, am uh, owning the outbound marketing motion for Greenhouse. Will? Yeah. So as Christina mentioned, she's an advisor to Lavender. I'm one of the founders at Lavender. It's a Chrome extension that sales reps use to write better emails faster. So we see millions of cold email data points every single month. We can tie them back to reply rates. And so one of the fun parts about my job when I'm you know, critiquing email is I get to point to the data and why we should approach things a certain way. Um, so this week, Christina, you sent me an email that somebody asked us to review and it's pretty good. They must be watching the show. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh man. This is a good way to test whether or not uh, you've got a good email template or a good uh, process. So yeah. yeah, I had someone reach out to me. I don't think that he wants to be named um, just in case. I mean, he didn't mention it, but considering the template that he sent us or the email he sent us, I'm going to assume that's the case. Um, but yeah, he sent it over to me on LinkedIn, asked if he could submit one. And here we are. So we have a viewer submitted. And by the way, side note, you can always hit up me or will if you want us to work through your email just be prepared sometimes <laughs> we might not have nice things to say about it but we don't mean it in a bad way it's a constructive crit uh critique yes. so <laughs> um you want to share your screen because i don't think i have permissions yeah that's um let's do that okay so got the 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 email here do you want me to read it christina yeah, you can read it if you want. So I'll just I'll fill in the blank with your and my name. So Christina, I enjoyed your company blog. Three unexpected ways you can outperform your competition. Outperforming the competition is also a focus for company competitors, like, as you know, competitor. Since I couldn't find a company called Data Solution, customers that need call data analyzed might be turning to your competitor. Could adding speech and analytics to the portfolio help your company compete with competitor? Happy hump day, Will. I love the happy hump day sign off. <laughs> I do too. I wish it was no. Friday. Or well, I wish it said happy Friday, which is when we're actually recording this because yeah, hump okay. day, Friday, big difference for me right now. I'm like, Friday. Friday. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Will, we were talking about this. It's not a bad email setup. Oh. Like I think the... What I want to say, and you'll see this in my rewrite, I don't even know what your rewrite looks like, Will. I love it. It's a surprise. Um, yeah. I literally almost just like kind of clean this up in certain ways. Uh, it's kind of how I felt about it. So I'm not going to lie. It's not bad. I think there's some uh, unnecessary verbiage that could probably be condensed, mm -hmm. but the premise, the foundational components of the flow, I, I don't hate it. Yeah, I actually ran this through Lavender because I was curious what it would score as, and it got a 91. So like if, I'm, if I'm talking to a sales rep and I'm, yeah, I'm on them about like clarity, et cetera, like I would tell them just hit send because it's at a 91. Don't waste your time. Um, yeah, it's two times more likely than if it got like an 85 to get a response. Now, there's some things about it that could use some work, um, mainly the thing that pointed out to me was like the clarity score. So um, if you look at this email, it's actually pretty on par with most emails that we see. So um, sorry, I'm leaning over because the cat over here decided to just start chewing on a wire. Um, <laughs> the, so pause. Um, <laughs> uh, so 70% of emails that go out the door are written at or beyond a 10th grade reading level. And this one is no different. This is at a 10th grade reading level. And it's wild because you could be boosting your positive response rate by just 
simplifying down the language. And so you mentioned cleaning up the verbiage. That's exactly right. It's just like, what are ways that we can reduce really the syllable count per sentence? That just like stood out to me. Um, yeah. The other thing that kind of stood out is like the logic flow is a little choppy, but like overall it starts with personalization. Um, it's got like a really good valid reason for reaching out, which is, yeah, your competitor has this product aspect, which like as a yeah, founder, if somebody reaches out to me, it's like, hey, your competitor has this and you don't, do you want it? Like that's going to resonate. So um, yeah, do you want to look at yours? Yeah. And I really like what you said there. It did take, I will say the one piece that was hard for me, and it's probably feeds into that clarity score. And I also hadn't drank enough coffee yet. Um, is at first I was like, I'm confused with the sense I couldn't find sentence. I was like, wait, they're turning to which company, like mm -hmm. what's going on here. So it took me a second to realize, oh, we're talking about they, my competitor has something that we don't or you couldn't find something, um, but anyway, yeah, that was yeah. the only piece I got kind of hung up on. Yeah, when, and like, that's that's exactly it. If your competitor is getting hung up on, or if your competitor, if your uh, reader is getting hung up on something, it's a pretty strong reason that they're not gonna reply. Yeah, it's very different when, like I'm reading this email for purposes of reviewing it, but if it was in my inbox, otherwise I would have already been like, eh, I'm not going to sit here and try to interpret, yeah, you know? Exactly. Um, so yeah, so I, I liked the format. I kind of took it and just tried to simplify the language, make it a little bit more, I don't know, easier to read. Uh, so here's what I came up with. Also pre-coffee. Uh, hi, Will. Enjoyed your recent blog about ways to outperform the competition. Thought I'd reach out. Speaking of competition, I couldn't find a call data solution for your company. This means your competitor, name that, I say name them. That's what I said, name them. Has a leg up on customers that need call data analyzed. My company helps companies like yours add speech analytics into the mix, gaining a competitive edge. Open to learning more or does it make sense to connect? And the reason I went this way, um, I don't think you need to put the title of the blog. Maybe it's easier if you're using something to help automatically pull some things in, but I really think you can just kind of sum it up, make it easier to read. It also shows the reader that not only are you personalizing, but you kind of condensed what the main purpose of that piece of content was, right? Yep. Um, and then I just tried to make it a little bit more playful but getting into and tying it back to that blog, right? Tying it back to the relevance piece. So that's my rewrite. Yeah. Oh, and I, I love this because like you look at the, um, I'm a big fan of like taking those variables and softening them up. Mm -hmm. And so you don't need to like regurgitate what they've already said. It's like, what did you gather from that? What did you obtain? And so you don't need to like, in quotes, like the title of the blog. I did the exact same thing with mine. Um, Not surprised. I also, I also love like the speaking of competition comma. I couldn't find, <laughs> like I thought that was great. It's like, it's got like a nice like conversational tone with it, um, which is cool, right? You're like on, it's a peer to peer conversation. So, um, and then the AB test for the ask is good too. This is good. Yeah, I think the one thing that I would change potentially about this, and it's kind of hard when we're not working with actual company names here, mm -hmm. is because I'm saying and implying that I'm talking about a competitor, not for nothing, who I'm reaching out to, they know who their competitors are, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So just saying this means blank. And when I say blank, this means company, like this means Lavender has a leg up on customers that need call data analyzed. You don't have to call it you know, this means your competitor. I mean, we know if you're solid, um, I probably would remove that extra buffer. Yeah. When you also run the risk of, cause like we get cold emails all the time at Lavender being like, Hey, you know, we can, oh gosh, they're like these like weird canned messages about like, we have, you know, customer data on this company, this company, and this company, your competitors. And I'm like, I've never heard of those people. <laughs> Right. Um, you got to so, be confident um, here. It's yeah, a confident over, play. Overstating the competition's name can actually be at your detriment. Yep. Um, 
Awesome. Ooh, I can't wait to see your rewrite. Come on, Will, show us. Yeah. The All right. All right. So I took a slightly different approach. So um, I actually moved the blog to the bottom, sort of taking like a 10, 80, 10 type rule of I'm going to personalize the top. I'm going to add a little bit about me in the middle, and then I'm going to personalize again at the bottom. So hi, Will. I noticed your company doesn't have a call data solution like the other company. Curious if that comes up in deals often. Through our API, we make it easy to add speech analytics to your product. I read your blog about outperforming competition. Made me think this might resonate. What do you think? So, Dude, for not getting home until like 1 a.m. last night and me waking you up with my cold text this morning, your rewrite is killer. Like literally, I really like this format. I didn't even think, and I've never even thought about moving the content personalization and tying that back to the outreach at the end of an email, but this makes sense. And this may not always make sense, right? Mm -hmm. It just depends on what kind of content you're working with. They just happen to have a blog that just feeds right into this. Um, right. It's not always that magical, but this is. Well, and like my thought on that is, you know, I don't necessarily love using just like, Hey, I saw your blog as personalization because it's not necessarily the reason that I'm reaching out. It's, right. it's like, it might be like a casual spark that I can use, but really the reason is you don't have this, your competitor does. Um, and so like one of the things that like I kind of feel is missing is I didn't necessarily say like, I didn't tie this and this together as well as I would like to. It's sort of like, hey, I noticed you don't have this. Um, usually I like to be like, yeah. Given that, yeah, you know, it's sort of like, but I, I kind of did it with the curious if that comes up in deals often, which. If, if you didn't name a competitor at the end of that first sentence, then I think it would be missing the flow component. Mm -hmm. But like, if you just had noticed ABC doesn't have a call data solution, curious if that comes up in deals often, that would feel a little harsher of a transition to me than the fact that you mentioned a competitor, which means they're probably going up against them at some point in time, yeah. right? In the sales cycle. So. Honestly, I wouldn't change anything about this one. I think the viewer who sent this in needs to A-B test against what you've got here. I mean, do it. Bring us the data too. We'll share it in a future episode. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, cool. This is a fun one. Um, yeah. Usually I feel like we're like attacking this like monster and somebody actually, like definitely has been taking uh, our advice and cleaning up language and really yeah. trying to chop it up. So this is a fun one. Um, that said, if you ever have an email that y'all want to work on, send them our way. Like our DMs are open. Um, yeah, I'm pretty active. We're both pretty active on, on LinkedIn and you can just shoot it to us there. I think that's, Christina, how you got this one. Yeah, I just gave my email and told them to forward it over to me so that I wouldn't lose it and can forward it to you too. So yeah, feel free. Uh, shoot them over to us. Let us know you have one. We we love doing these. So yeah, that's sure. why we do them every week. Yep. The next yeah. week. Until next week. Um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, you should definitely subscribe to Sales Hacker because these get delivered to your inbox every single week. But until next week, I'm Walra, Christina. I'm Christina. Awesome. Thanks, y'all.